It is 11 a.m. here in London. It's 1 p.m. in Damascus. I'm Monita Rajpal at the Olympic Park. You're watching CNN. This is World One. Britain says it will donate nearly $8 million to help rebel forces take control of Syria. The aid will pay for communications equipment and medical supplies. The U.K. announcement follows a deadly day of violence. The Syrian opposition says more than 100 people were killed. This is from the Turkish capital in Istanbul. Ivan, let's first of all talk about this aid going to the rebels. How does that translate on the ground? What have you seen? Well, what we saw was uh, weapons, ammunition crossing the border from Turkey secretly uh, in unmarked uh, ammunition. Ivan, thank you and for that. Ivan Watson reporting to us there live from Istanbul. Of course, we'll also take you live to Downing Street a little bit later on in the show to give you more on uh, Britain announcing it's uh, sending millions of dollars worth of aid to Syrian rebels. To Egypt now, and Egyptian state television is reporting that six militants have been arrested in the Sinai following an attack on a police station earlier today. It is the latest in a series of militant attacks in the region, which began at the weekend, killing 16 Egyptian soldiers. Egypt has been sending more troops and tanks to reinforce the area. Egyptian troops have been arriving in Al Arisha, the scene of the attacks, and that's where we're joined by Ian Lee with more on that. Ian. Well, Monita, what we're hearing now is that uh, security forces there. We want to see what newspapers in the region are saying about this. In the United Arab Emirates, the headline in Gulf News is Mercy is willing to take decisive action. And it goes on to say, like any state, Egypt cannot afford to let vicious militants gain the upper hand. No government can survive if it is not willing to take action against those who ignore the law and challenge its very existence. Welcome back to the United States versus China with just a precious few days of competition remaining. The two superpowers of these Olympics are in a fierce fight for the top spot on the medals table. The U.S. is now leading by two golds after a leapfrogging China late last night. Team GB is a third with 25 gold, 52 overall. Both Great Britain and the U.S. will have another chance to add to their tally shortly. Now, the first of today's uh, medal events is happening away from where we are. Uh, the men's 10K marathon swim is due to start in under an hour's time in Hyde Park. But as far as medal moments go, this will be pretty hard to top. He did it in Beijing, and sensationally, Usain Bolt did it again here in London. Last night, the 25-year-old uh, Jamaican became the first man in Olympic history to defend his 100 and 200-meter titles. Another highlight of last night's athletics came in the men's 800-meter final. Not only did uh, David Radish of Kenya win gold for the East African nation, he broke his own world record, giving Kenyans around the world, including World One's own Zane Virgi, a chance to cheer. Woo! <laughs> I was really cheering. Everyone was cheering about that. You yeah. know, the whole country, you know, the whole weight of Kenya's hopes was on David Rudisha's shoulders. He is an incredible runner. Everyone was talking about him and saying, you know, this is the best runner you've never heard of. And now today everyone has heard of him. He broke his own world record. He ran one minute, 40, 40 seconds. I spoke a short while ago to the Prime Minister, Raila Odinga, who was here in town, and he talked a little bit about David Rudisha and how excited he was, but he also talked about Kenya wanting to host the 2024 Olympic Games. Just listen to what he had to say. Certainly, and I'm actually being very disappointed with the, the coverage uh, in the local <laughs> media here. Uh, they're highlighting only the English athletes. Zane, thank you very Thanks. much. Zane will be back with us a little bit later on uh, to talk a little bit more about girl power at these games. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Just a little more than two weeks before Republicans in the U.S. anoint Mitt Romney, their candidate, at their uh, national convention. And it appears that months of negative ads about Romney from President Barack Obama's team may be hurting the challenger. The late number two, CNN political editor Paul Steinhauser. Hi, Paul. Good to see you. Let's talk about a little bit about this, uh, these unfavorables. What are we talking about here? Yeah, and you're right. You were mentioning all these negative attacks from the president's campaign and also from other pro-democratic groups that are supporting President Obama's re-election. And they are taking a toll, it seems, on Mitt Romney. Look at his unfavorable numbers. You can see from our new CNN ORC. It's a national poll. And um, opinion of Mitt Romney, 
48% unfavorable, 47% favorable. That 48% at the bottom there. All right. It's not a popularity contest. I thought it was always a popularity contest. <laughs> Paul, thank you very much for that. Paul Steinhauser there for us in Washington. Well, as the world watches the race for the Oval Office, uh, rising food prices are setting off global alarm bells, and, is, and U.S. corn prices are at record levels ahead of a report on just how much the worst U.S. drought in more than 50 years is affecting farm production. The U.S. Department of Agriculture is uh, scheduled to release another crop yield estimate today. It is expected to show a decline in corn and soybean yields. The high price of corn is uh, putting pressure. On any rain on the way? Well, let's go to our meteorologist Jennifer Delgado at the World Weather Center. You know, it's funny, Jen, over here, we don't want to hear about rain, right. but over some parts of the world, rain is necessary. Absolutely. You know, you've had a very wet summer across parts of Great Britain, but uh, across the U.S., of course, we know it's been very dry here. And like that. Finally getting a break. Yeah. You're fanning yourself. It's, I rarely it's... see this coming out of the U.K. <laughs> it's quite a bit of a scorcher today out oh. here in the Olympic Park, but you know what? It's nice, and you can see lots of people actually started to come in through. Absolutely. Enjoy Beautiful. all the events that this area has all to right. offer. Jen, thank you very much. Take for care. That. You are watching World One live from London. It's certainly been Olympics mania for the past. I'll take you back now to our top story and the promise by the British government to provide support for rebel fighters in Syria. We want to take you live now to Downing Street where Nick Robertson has been uh, in a briefing with government officials. What more did they say, Nick? Well, British Foreign Secretary William Hague said that the reason the British government wanted to up its funding to help the rebels, specifically the Free Syrian Army... He's Nick, thank you very much for that. CNN's Nick Robertson reporting to us there from uh, 10 Downing Street. Uh, let's switch gears now, shall we, and talk about the few precious days of competition left here at the Olympics. And today looks set to be uh, another nail-biter on the track. The U.S. will uh, challenge the Bahamas for gold in the men's 4 by 400 meter relay. There are now only three days days left until the end of these uh, London games. Soon the athletes will leave the torch extinguished and the stadium will fall silent. So what happens next? Never since London won the bid to host these games, organizers have stressed the importance of legacy. So the Olympic venues are a big hit, but now the real test will begin. It's all about the legacy. Now keep in mind, $12 billion of UK taxpayer money was spent on this Olympic Park, with three quarters of that going towards long-term improvements for the surrounding area here of East London. But can the Games actually transform the lives of those who live in the park's shadow. Well, joining us now is Jane Ash Ashworth. She's uh, from the Charity Street Games. Jane, thank you very much for being with us. Do you think this will be a positive legacy? Oh, I don't think there's any doubt about it. I think up and down the country, particularly young people, are delighted to have been involved in the Games. All right, I, I wish you the, the most of luck. Thank you so much, Jane. Thank appreciate you. that. No, no. Well, in other news this hour, Madonna continued to uh, express herself in Russia on Thursday, reportedly riling up her audience and ruffling the government. In her uh, St. Petersburg concert, she sang out against Russia's controversial gay propaganda law that effectively oh, banned... While in Western Russia, authorities discovered what they're describing as a human anthill, an underground bunker where leaders of an Islamic sect forced members to live for at least a decade. Matthew Chance reports on how dozens of people, many of them children, spent every waking hour underground. You're watching World One live from London. The men. So, 17 medals that are on offer today here in London, with six of those to be handed out in athletics at the Olympic Stadium behind us. We want to take a look at some uh, potential highlights for you. Today's athletics competition the women's 5,000 meters uh, pits Ethiopia's Tiranesh Dibaba against. Well, it's hard to believe that anything could rival Usain Bolt's performance in the Olympic Stadium last night, but uh, David Radisha did just that. The Kenyan athlete produced one of the greatest ever middle distance performances as he smashed the 800 meters uh, world record on his way to winning gold. Well, we've got the men's diving to look forward to at the Aquatic Center today. Olympic gold medalist Greg Luganis joins us now with a look at what's ahead in the pool. Greg, good to see you. Thank you so much for being with us. Sure. Who are you excited about? Well, you know, it's it, the diving has been dominated by China. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome back. You are watching World One live from London. We are approaching almost 7 a.m. in New York. It's almost 1 p.m. for you in Berlin, and it's almost 8 p.m. in Tokyo. Jessica Ennis, Sally Pearson, Missy Franklin, Ding Ning, names that will go down as gold medal winners at the London Games. Team GB's Nicola Adams also collected gold in the flyweight division, a history-making moment as she became the first ever women's Olympic boxing champion. What, Juanita, actually.
Take a look at the newspapers. It's not actually lost on anyone. This is the Daily Mail, and the headline here reads, three more girls, three more golds, all right? And the pictures here are of uh, Charlotte uh, Dujardin winning the gold in the individual dressage. She was amazing. She was actually a stable girl, and mm. now she's become queen of individual dressage. I think that's something to be said about, I think, Olympics, what it has done is, you know, it reignited this sense of unity and that we all feel that if you work hard enough, you can get what you want. Yeah, right. it makes you want to be an athlete, it doesn't certainly it? certainly does, but it's just not going to happen Yeah, for let's me, get I some think. chocolate after this. I know. <laughs> Zane, thank you very much for that. It's always a pleasure. You are watching World One live from London. Thank you for watching. I'm Monita Rajpal at the Olympic Park. We'll update you with news headlines right after this. Stay with CNN.